Dunga was back too, having between the two legs been to Brazil for an international for his home country. Juventus made just one change forced upon them. Dario Bonetti, who got his second yellow card in the first leg, was out suspended and he was ironically replaced by Pasquale Bruno, who was returning from his one-match suspension. Soviet star Alexander Zavarov was now out of favour and on the bench. Your commentator is Martin Tyler. Well, welcome to the Partenio Stadium in Avellino, the scene of the second leg of the 1990 UEFA Cup final. It's officially, in quotes, the home leg for Fiorentina. Moved away from their home city because of trouble in the semi-final in Florence. Fiorentina, 3-1 down from playing the first leg in Turin. And Juventus, very much the favourites here in this uh, domestic match in a European context. Fiorentina unchanged from the first leg. They were concerned about Carlos Dunga, their Brazilian midfield player, who played for Brazil in Brazil on Sunday. He got back here on Monday night and has slept well, we're led to believe, and is raring to go, but it won't be easy for him. Juventus are uh, without Dario Bonetti, who was uh, suspended for a yellow card he got in the uh, first game, his second yellow card of the competition. But Pasquale Bruno, who was suspended himself in the first leg, is the obvious replacement. from West Germany, Aaron Schmidhuber, who will uh, be taking part in the World Cup Finals. Fiorentina's best hope of turning this around here in Avellino is a 2-0 win. That would give them the UEFA Cup by virtue of an away goal. But here's Gilacci looking for an away goal of his own. And he was leading the race against Volpecina quite clearly until he was impeded. Scalacci, who's had such a tremendous season with Juventus, he's in Italy's World Cup squad. And Juventus will feel that a goal here should be enough. Fiorentina one ingredient, the genius of Baggio, more on that in a moment as Alessio... Oh, and Galea glanced it on. Marco Landucci furious with the markers. And Roberto Galea, who scored after two minutes in the first game, very nearly repeated the dose here. Here's Battistini. Scalacci... Uh, Chasing back and bringing Badistini down. Padino's off his last game in charge of Juventus. He can really go out in style. Luigi Maifredi has been appointed the Juventus coach for next season. It seems somewhat hard on Zoff, who's already won the Italian Cup this season. Fiorentina with Baggio here. The man they're looking to, he borders really on genius and his skills, and he manufactured a shot here that would have been beyond many players. Kubik has that lovely feel for the ball on the left foot. As you can imagine, there is... A High security in the stadium here. There was trouble on the terraces, not so much on the field in the first game. going to be a 
test of Fiorentina's patience. Busso. so far and Graziani I'm sure appreciates that there won't be too many chances and that fell to Baggio after Di Chiara had just sort of knocked the ball in behind a couple of markers there and Baggio was first to it a real match of this if Fiorentina do get the first goal of this second leg and it would jangle the nerves of Juventus you can be sure of that they haven't been that fluent this season to be sure of sustaining their position here despite being strong favourites one of their weaknesses has been a defence that's leaked goals in league games by their standards and by Italian standards. You can get at them, that's what Fiorentina have got to try to do. Gallia. Schilacci prepared to back his pace again. Penalised the free kick taken quickly. Which rather let Balpacina off the hook, I think, because the referee, if Juventus had delayed, particularly as Balpacina, uh, it wasn't his first foul of the game, shall we say. That's easy for Marco Landucci. this time Palestini hits it rather wastefully through the centre Juventus won't mind that sort of approach one little bit Tacconi who's an old hand will take what time the referee allows him which won't be too long nil nil in Avellino the local club here midway in the Italian second division relegated last season. Buddy. Kept him well by Schilacci. Alessio. Kasiragi trying to turn. Kasiragi was looking for a goal himself, but Schilacci actually came onto it, facing the goal. He had the shot. Quick by Gallia. Marocchi. Lollio just left a foot there. On Giancarlo Marocchi, another of Azelio Vicini's 22 for the World Cup. And Alenikov playing the sweeper's role tonight in the absence of Dario Bonetti and the injured uh, Roberto Trucella. Battistini. Here's Kubik. Olio's gallop forward again. Battistini. pulling to the right well that was a progressive attack from Fiorentina Nappi did have a cluster of teammates herring into the penalty area more than he would expect in the average league game on a night when one goal won't be enough for Fiorentina Pulled them all really by a 
nose kick and, uh, and Nappy ran offside. Kaziragi, an advantage played here. Kaziragi, now a nappy's offside, incidentally, but Kaziragi is uh, showing well in this game, and he's done particularly well in the UEFA Cup run for Juventus without being a regular in the league side. Halfway through the first half of the second leg of the UEFA Cup final. This all Italian affair. Bringing out all the inherent passion for the game in this football crazy country. Sgilacci. Casiraghi. Well, really, just to prove the point that. I was making a minute or two ago. Pierluigi Casiraghi, he's only 21. And he scored crucial goals in the final already, and in the quarter-final, and in the third round, when really he's just learning his trade at this level. with this uh, dreadful dilemma, really. They have to go for goal, but they don't let anything slip at the back. It wouldn't be the worst thing for them to uh, keep it to nil-nil till half-time and then really go over a shorter course, the second 45 minutes, when uh, there's just a chance that Juventus might not be able to uh, capitalise on any policy of all-out attack. of interest in the final. Dunga. And of course, a Fiorentina goal at this stage would really fan the flames. Baggio, can he supply it? For Nappi, and uh, it was just a little tense and tight in there, which is bound to be. I should think the hardest thing for Graziani, the coach, in preaching his instructions for this game is to get his players to relax and try and play to their peak. You very rarely do that if you're tight and tense and worried about the time ticking away. There is a similarity here to a famous ending to the uh, English League Championship last season. The 88-89 season when Arsenal had to go to Liverpool and win by two goals to take the title, otherwise Liverpool would be the champions. It was nil-nil at half-time in that, and that was according to Arsenal's plan, because they felt that they might get the two by taking on Liverpool over the shorter course, the second half, and maybe Fiorentina will not be too displeased that they've uh, got themselves in this position. Still two goals down from the first leg, but nothing worse has happened in the first half. And now, with 45 minutes remaining, they can have a real crack at Juventus. It is an appealing prospect, it's a difficult prospect for them, but Juventus still won't feel that they've actually done the job. So, nil-nil here in the first half of the second leg. Juventus, 3-1 up. We'll be back here for the second half. Well, welcome back to the Patenio Stadium in Avellino.
this ground that's uh, been pressed into service because of the punishment handed out to Fiorentina. And so far, the authorities here have coped with the stress of the occasion very well indeed. And the supporters too, who didn't behave themselves in a manner which covered them with honour in the... Uh, or some of them didn't in the first game. Uh, much more in keeping with the spirit of the occasion so far. Let me just remind you again that it's nil-nil here in the second leg. Juventus won the first leg two weeks ago by three goals to one. And we surely can expect Fiorentina now to roll up their sleeves and have a real go at Juventus to try to win a major European trophy, the last one for Fiorentina back in 1961 when they won the first Cup Winners' Cup. Juventus, of course, while their trophy cabinet is much bigger and much fuller. Dunga. Nappi. It went with a useful effort. Maybe it will fuel the uh, Fiorentina ambition which needs a little bit of fueling, but they've still got plenty of time. Just to remind you again, if they were to win 2-0 here, they would win the UEFA Cup. It wouldn't go to extra time because of the away goal they got in Turin. All credit to Juventus. There's been a few signs of panic here. They've played professionally and tidily. second, they're closer and closer to collecting the UEFA Cup. And Scilacci being told he's not required out here, they want him in the middle. Rui Barosh, the smallest player in the penalty area. It's Alessio who's going to take the free kick. Scalacci having won a physical challenge to get to the ball first. He'll be disappointed with the header. He had to shrug off Volpacina. It was a reasonable chance. Here's Busso. And Busso is furious with Bruno, who's sent off for his second bookable offence. And really, Juventus can't take issue with the ruling, but they will certainly take issue with Bruno. If he'd have just jockeyed Busso then, there wasn't a direct threat. But Bruno decided he'd got to go for it. And he was really rash and reckless. So that has put a different complexion on the time that remains. One of the defensive markers has gone, and Fiorentina have 11 against 10. Here's Volpertina. How will Juventus cope? Well enough as long as it uh, stays at nil-nil, but if... Fiorentina could now add to the dismissal of Bruno with a goal here. Juventus might find themselves really on the rack. Volpacina's shot. Pasquale Bruno sent off 13 minutes into the second half. moment as Juventus might have started to rock you need a goalkeeper who really is on top of his profession as Tacconi is it wasn't by any means an easy catch and the consequence is had he dropped the ball might have been catastrophic thinking about 
about bringing on another marker. The referee's very concerned about any time wasting. He's been right on top of that. But Zoff has got Sergio Brio on the bench, the, the veteran centre back. Brio started the first leg and was pulled all over the place by Fiorentina and was substituted at half time. I would doubt whether Zoff would feel it was the right thing to bring him on. We must wait and see. What he really would like would be for his ten men to contribute a goal here and ease the nerves that must have mounted now. A little more time wasting by Tacconi. He let the ball run. Pass this time to Napoli to get on with it. Graziani, who had such a distinguished playing career, 64 caps, 23 goals for Italy. He started the World Cup final in 1982 against uh, West Germany and Spain. Didn't last too long before he had to go off injured. You might remember Altabelli replaced him and came on to score in that final. Dunga! It certainly swerved, it had that Brazilian feel to it. And he can hit them with both feet. It was uh, just a leisurely swing of the left leg then, and suddenly the ball was uh, roaring towards Tacconi's goal. But the goalkeeper wasn't phased by it. But it is a corner. Taken by Kubik. Dealt with again by De Agostini, who's... Uh, Covered that space by the near post pretty effectively for Juventus. Gilacci was impeded. throws the ball to Scalacci. Dogged work by Volpicina. A lot coming for Fiorentina through Dunga at the moment. And uh, Battistini as well, who can really forget his uh, defensive responsibilities. And that's had uh, Tacconi's heart fluttering a little. It was a sort of shovel shot, really. Battistini did play... Uh, the forward earlier in his career. Very much a backman now. He connected pretty cleanly. Takani would like you to think that he knew that was going wide. I'm not so sure. The foul by Rui Baros on Del Olio as he headed the ball. I think has had a good game. He's kept things under control. He looks very fit. He's always on the top of the play. He's got to be fit, of course, for the World Cup finals. Nappy. Baggio! That's where he could do something drastic to Juventus. Little juggle up for the volley. <laughs> oh. 
Juventus won this trophy back in 1977. In the 80s, they won the other two uh, European club competitions, so they have got the full set. Fiorentina. Safe pass to Badestini in the end. Then Dunga clips it in with the outside of the foot. Dikio! Wonderful save! Busso! No! And the ball's still in play. Baggio! And Lenikov in the way. Tremendous goalkeeping by Tacconi. And here comes Baggio again. Tina may have a free kick here. And it's right on the edge. But Di Chiara's header brought the save of the game so far from Tacconi a moment or two ago. It's the best spell of pressure, really, that Fiorentina have mounted. Dunga. The event is trying to get an offside. Dunga's header. Di Chiara's tackle against uh, Alessio. Here's Dunga. Nappi. Can he pinch a goal here? He couldn't because uh, D'Agostini defended with uh, great purpose and uh, indeed within the uh, framework of the laws of the game as well, despite what the Fiorentina fans thought. Cracks are starting to appear in the Juventus defending. Mostly because of the sending off of Bruno and the effect that's had on Fiorentina. It's galvanised them again. The referee not sure that Busso went for the ball then, but he might have gone over the ball. So Busso gets a card. Nineteen minutes left. now what sort of gambles that uh, Graziani is going to take and Nappi is to my mind surprisingly replaced Marco Nappi worried the life out of uh, Juventus in the first half the first game, Rui Varos gives way to Avalone, who's one of the 20 year olds. Here's Galia. Juventus don't have a very big playing staff when they carry a couple of injuries which they have had to over the last few weeks of the league season. Fuchella I mentioned earlier, he's been out for a while and Fortunato uh, as well. players are feeling a muscle strain. Luigi D'Agostini is in the Italian 22, but doing his level best to give full concentration to Juventus here. And it can't be that difficult when you've got a, a huge prize at stake. Here's Dunga, 
Kubik to the right. Well, Takone is the difference at the moment between the, uh, the real problem for Juventus. Zironelli is another of these players who's... Uh, it is different in Italy to a lot of European countries. They carry young players on the staff, very rarely use them in league games. Sampdoria, for example, only use 16 players in their entire league programme. And yet we've got a player here on each side, Avalone and Cironelli, with scarcely any league experience between them, being asked to influence a major European final. this time, that's on the edge again. I think the uh, fury there might be... Well, it wasn't justified. The first challenge was just outside. It was very close. But when you've got Baggio in your team, as long as he's in full working order, this could almost be as good as a penalty. West German referee Aaron Schmidhuber doing his best to uh, keep it good humoured. Alessio coming from this side. Tony has got a six-man wall. Baggio takes it. The goalkeeper was in the right place. And I don't think you've got to look too far for the man of this match. He's outthought his opponents, really. He makes the saves because of a tremendous sense of anticipation. And it was almost as if he said to Baggio, you try and put it in that corner. But Olenikov's not happy with the goalkeeper. Maybe he feels he should have held it. Kaziragi has got a major problem. And Juventus will have to make another change. I think it's a hamstring that's gone. He can hardly move that left leg. But the corner is taken. All sorts of drama here. got to get Kazaragi off. Well, players will tell you that muscles tend to go uh, in the first ten minutes of a game when you're not warmed up properly, or towards the last ten minutes when the muscle gets tired. Emiliano Rosa comes into the category of those players I was telling you about earlier, a very limited experience. He's only 19. And that's uh, Kaziragi helping to defend. He has worked so hard. No wonder that uh, Hamstring has said enough is enough. Volpacina tries to force away through again. Kubik. Badistini is there. Kubik! Well, it must look to Fiorentina as though there are three men in that Juventus goal. Volpacina takes the throw. A minute left and Fiorentina still have to score twice. Past the goalkeeper who has refused to be beaten. Stefano Tacconi, an Avellino player between 1980 and 1983 before he moved on to Juventus. And he has given a most creditable performance on the ground he knows so well. And because of Tacconi, really, at the crucial stage, 
Juventus are going to triumph here. Battistini's header. It's just a matter of the time now that the referee chooses to add on before he confirms Dino Zoff's team as winners of the UEFA Cup. Dunga. Gallia right by the side of Baggio again. Juventus have won it. Most of their best work in the first leg. They came here and played it pretty well with a two-goal advantage on a neutral ground until Bruno, stupidly, to my mind, got himself sent off 13 minutes into the second half. After that, it was a very different story. It allowed Fiorentina to force the pace against 10 men and they suddenly started to make life very busy for Stefano Tacconi. Bruno uh, mingling his joy with relief, I'm sure, as they run to Dino's off. What a farewell present it is for him. But a terrific sequence of saves by Tacconi. Really should be remembered from the second leg. That was the crucial contribution. As Gallia gives his version of events, the player who scored the opening goal in the first leg after just two minutes on the night in Turin when Busso equalised in a very even first half. In fact, a first half that was more Fiorentina than Juventus. Casiraghi and De Agostini turned it away at the Turin base club in the second half of the first leg. We've had no goals here, but no shortage of incident. And Dino's off. A winner in the Italian Cup this season with Juventus has done a double. They've got the UEFA Cup as well, and this is the greater prize. And the players try to make their way forward to collect it. What a season it is for the Italian clubs in Europe. Stefano Tacconi, who turned out to be the man of the match, holds up the UEFA Cup for Juventus. A great goalkeeper who's had a great night here on a ground he knows so well. And he's had his hands now on all three major European trophies. Juventus, 22 times champions of Italy. Eight times they've won the Italian Cup. They've sprinkled their achievements too with great European honours. And their name is on the roll of honour again for this season. <laughs>